Hello everyone, I'm Vanessa, your homeschool narrowboat teacher, and I'm just giving Sefa a quick wash before our lesson today. I'm at a water point, which is a great opportunity to fill up a couple of bowls of water to use to clean my dog. Sefa isn't the easiest dog to wash as she wriggles a lot and she thinks the whole thing is a game. Now I always make sure the water in the bowl is nice and warm, but I needn't bother really because Labradors originated in Newfoundland in the 1500s where they were bred to jump into icy waters in order to retrieve the fish that had fallen from the fishermen's hooks. They could also pull in the nets filled with fish. Labradors have coats that repel water and their paws are webbed which makes them superb swimmers. The original name for these dogs was the St John's Water Dog or the Lesser Newfoundland because they're a cross between a Newfoundland and a small water dog. They didn't come over to England until the 1800s and in the 1830s they became shooting dogs which means they go out on a shoot to retrieve the kill and that is when they started to be called Labradors. Hello everyone, I hope you're keeping well. Today we're going to do a slightly different lesson with a different format from my other lessons and we're going to look at reading comprehension. Let's have a look at the information. So when you are doing reading comprehension, you need to be able to decode and that means you need to be able to read first of all. And when you're very little, you learn the skill of reading through your phonics. But once you know how to read words, then you are decoding them. Then you need to understand what you are reading. That's really important skill as well, because you might be given something to read in class and at the end of reading it all, you might not have understood really what's happened. So I always say you need to think as you're reading, who is it about, what is happening, where is it taking place, when is it taking place and why is it happening, your five W's. If you're asking yourself that as you're reading, you'll pick up the gist of what it is you've read. Uh, then there are the actual different types of question that you'll asked or be asked when you're doing reading comprehension and they cover a whole range of skills and the ones I'm going to concentrate in my videos are vocabulary questions, inference questions, prediction questions, explanation questions, retrieval questions and summary skills. Now this reading comprehension lesson is part one and I'm going to look at vocabulary, inference and retrieval today. And then in reading comprehension part two video, I will look at prediction, explanation and summarising skills. So you'll have a list of strategies of what to go through when you're answering that type of question. This video should be really useful if you are in year six and you're doing your SATs and you get that big reading comprehension paper that you have to do um, because these skills hopefully will help you answer those types of question. So first of all, I would like you to on my next slide to pause the video where it comes up with the introduction of my book Zephyr the Narrowboat Dog Stories and this is the book called Feathers and Fines. And um, I've included, to start it, to open it up, a picture of the front cover, which my mother-in-law, who is a very talented artist, has designed. So I want to say a big, massive thank you to Diane Thomas, because um, she is bringing my book to life at the moment. So I've included the introduction cover of the book. OK, so step one, go to the introduction, freeze the video there and just read the introduction because then we're going to have a look at a question related to that. Okay. So pause the video and read the introduction. At a question. So I have um, a list of basic steps in order to go through how to understand what you have to do with the question. 
And if we look up here, it says, read the text. What semicolon there? Read the question. Step two, underline and understand. I'm going to explain that in a minute. And then step three, follow what you have to do. Now, I apologise now in advance for this, but I have a little rhyme that helps you remember this. And it's R and R, you and you, then follow what you have to do. R and R, you and you, then follow what you have to do. Sorry. So let's try that now. You've read the text. Well done for that. Now we're going to read the question. Which word in the introduction shows you Zephyr likes to explore? So we've done step one. We've read the text and we've read the question. So now we have to underline. And when you underline, you underline the key information. And as you read the question, this time you look for that. So you say to yourself, what have I got to do? So what have I got to do? Go back to the question. I have to find a word which means explore. And it's about what Zephyr is doing. OK, so I've underlined that I need to find a word which explains the same as Zephyr liking to explore. So step three is follow what you have to do. And this is what am I having to do? Oh, I'm having to look at a word, find a word. So that means you're doing a vocabulary question. So now we use a set of skills for vocabulary. So we go back to the text and I'll show you now what you have to do. So now in my text, I've got the keyword Zephyr and I'm looking for her name and any words which describe her as liking to explore. The first paragraph mentions her name and what she looks like. The second paragraph is where she lives. But look, in the third paragraph, it describes her as a curious Labrador. And curious means she must like exploring and finding things out. So that skill that you were doing is called skimming and scanning, which means you weren't reading the whole thing through word by word because you'd already done that. You were actually looking and finding the key words and looking to see a word that explained or meant the same as explore. And we found it. Now we have to write that in our own words underneath the question. So which word in the introduction shows you Zephyr likes to explore? To explore. OK, so now let's try an inference question. This is a slightly different set of skills. So pause the video here and read the first part of chapter one, Trust and a Duck. And then we'll have a look at an inference question related to this part of the text. Right, so now we're going to have a look at an inference question based on what you have just read. So remember R and R, you and you, then follow what you have to do. So you've done the first R, which is you've read the text. And now we need to read the question, the second R. So, how is the duckling feeling at the beginning of chapter one? So we've read the text and now we've read the question. And now we need to think to ourselves, what do we have to do? And we get ready to underline the key information to help us understand what we have to do. The you and the you. So, how is the duckling feeling? So I need to describe some feelings, words that describe feelings at the beginning of chapter one. So that's the part that I've read and the feelings relate to the duckling. So that's really my key information. So now I understand that I have to describe the feelings. Now, what makes this an inference question is that inference means that you have to look beyond into a deeper meaning of the text because the answer isn't actually there. So you have to have a good guess, a good idea. And so what I'd like you to do now is have an idea from what you've read about how the duckling is feeling. Think of your idea. Then what you do with that idea in mind, you go back to the text and you have a look to find evidence to see if actually your idea is correct. And that's the inference part of the skill. 
That's the follow what you have to do when you're inferring. You have to look for evidence that supports your idea. So after the you and you, you have to think of an idea and then find evidence. evidence. So my idea is that the duckling is feeling worried and feeling upset. So I'm going to have a look now for evidence about that. Now, once again, I'm skimming and scanning the text, but this time I'm looking for evidence that proves my idea that the duckling is feeling worried and upset. So look, I found the word flustered and I found the words high pitched cries and making a terrible fuss. That's enough evidence to prove my point. There's other words that describe the duckling like fluffy, but that's not evidence to say that she was upset or worried. So I think I've got my answer. If you can't find evidence, always go back and have another idea. So the answer is she is feeling worried and upset. I know this because it states that she is flustered, has high pitched cries and is making a terrible fuss. Now let's look at a retrieval question. Read the text again first and then we'll have a look at the question. So retrieval. R and R, you and you, find out what you've got to do. So you've done the first R, which is you have read the text again. Now we're going to read the question, the second R. What does grandma think has happened to the duckling? So now we've read the question, we are going to ask ourselves, what do we have to do? And we're going to get ready to underline and then understand. So what does grandma think has happened to the duckling? Oh, I need to talk about grandma's thoughts about the duckling and what has happened. That's all I'm going to underline because now I know. Now, this is a retrieval question, so the follow what you have to do, because the answer is actually there. It describes and it says what grandma's thoughts are directly. So you don't have to infer by looking at how grandma is behaving to find her thoughts. She actually says what she thinks. So now we're going to skim and scan the text and we're going to retrieve, which means we're going to take and lift the answer out of the text because it's there for us. But the answer has to describe what grandma is thinking has happened to the duckling, her thoughts about it. So once again, I'm skimming and scanning the text, looking this time for what grandma is thinking has happened to the duck. And right at the bottom in the last paragraph on this page, it says, she actually says that she thinks that they have a lost and forgotten baby duck on their hands. So grandma is thinking that the duckling is lost and that she's been forgotten by her family. It's right there for us to retrieve and put into our answer. Full stop. Grandma thinks the duckling is lost and has been forgotten by her family. So I've retrieved, I've taken out the exact answer that tells us what grandma thinks has happened to the duckling. We've checked back. So you've worked really hard today on the three skills of vocabulary, inference and retrieval. And now it's time for your activity, which is set around those three skills. Good luck everyone and well done. Pause the video and try these three questions, which are all related to the chapter that you've just read. So here are the answers. How did you get on? They don't need to be exactly the same words that I've used, but they need to be based around the same idea. Typical. She's just had a bath and here she is getting all dirty again. Anyway, I'll see you next lesson and take care.